So in this video, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to create pretty much any Thinkorswim script you want to. This is a great way for non-coders to harness the full power of Thinkorswim. And at the end of the video, I'll give you access to the script if you want it, but I recommend you try and follow along for yourself to get the most value out of it. All right, let's get into it. So the example script I'm gonna create in this video is uh, this one right here. And you don't need to know how to code to create this, but we're gonna create this from scratch and I'm gonna show you how. And what this particular script does, if you open this right here, the, the user can input these three values right here, you know, uh, three different moving averages. I have it defaulted to 20, 50, and 200. And you could change these from SMA to EMA for any of these. It'll say whatever, you know, whatever stock symbol it is, is, you know, how much above or below the 20 day SMA or, you know, above or below the 50 day SMA or above or below the 200 day SMA. And, you know, these variables change as you change the settings. And like, if you go to a more bearish one or something, so this one is 20% below the uh, 200 day SMA. So you see it's colored in red. So it automatically detects that for any stock you enter in here. It's just a quick way to see what the stock's doing, but this is just an example to show you how to create these kind of scripts and you could, you know, create a script for whatever you want. This is just happens to be the script that I wanted. All right, so if you might have guessed already, but to create these scripts, I'm gonna use a uh, ChatGPT. I have a, a premium account with them, so you know I have access to ChatGPT4. But if you have a free account, you're you know you probably use 3.5, and you know that probably does just as good of a job. I, I never checked it because you know I have a premium account, so I want to use ChatGPT4. But I'm sure 3.5 will be fine. But anyway, so what you do is pretty much just talk to it you you treat it like it's a an assistant coder or something and you just you keep iterating slowly like don't don't start from the very beginning with exactly what you want with exactly what you have in mind start really small and i'm going to show you and i'm going to show you through this entire conversation how it went and i'm going to you know keep copying and pasting this so you could see how it went along and the prompts are everything when you're using chat gpt and if you get good at prompting it you're going to get great results with it Okay, so first I said, you know, can you create a think script study which will add three different labels? Label one, the stock is X percent above or below the 20 day SMA. And I meant to, uh, you know, go to the next line and say label two and then label three. But when I pressed enter, it actually just, you know, submitted this. So it, and the thing just like, you know, started working instantly. So I couldn't even add label two and three, but it says certainly, you know, and it came up with this and it gives you the, the summary of what it is, but here's the code it spits out. So let me just copy this code and then you head right into a thinkorswim and I'm just gonna get rid of this one for now. And then we're gonna create a new one. So under studies, just go create and then you name it up here. Average stats three, okay? And then just gonna get rid of this and then just gonna paste that code. And watch out for this in this editor, you know, this, this autocomplete comes up a lot. And if you accidentally click on it, it'll, you know, insert these words and your code won't work. So just like click away from it. And then once you have this code right here, um, and you're gonna notice right here, it put declare lower at the top because it thinks you, you know, want this in in the, uh, the bottom, in one of the bottom study areas, but you're gonna see later that we don't want that there and we have it get rid of that. So let me go apply. You see, it put the label here at the bottom one, but that's not what we want. And you know, I could easily just fix that myself by just deleting that one line. But if you don't tell chat GPT, it'll just keep putting it back in there through every iteration and you wanna make sure it's gone. So next one, I go back to chat GPT and then I added the, uh, the second label and the third label. And then it put those in for me right here. So I'm gonna copy this code and now I'll go back into here. And if you want to just replace this code, all you do is just double click on this little script thing. And then just press, you know, control or command A if you're on the Mac. And then just paste the new one in. And then that's pretty much all there is. And you just keep doing this. You see now you have these in right here. So we have all three of these already. And they're already telling us, you know, if it's above or below by the different colors. So we're, we're getting pretty close already. So now that we have like the bare bones of the script, it's time to, uh, you know, get into the, 
the nitty gritty with it and make sure it's actually correct. And we have to add all the bells and whistles we want and stuff and make it look nice and everything. And if you look down here, you see for these uh, percentage values, they're ridiculously high. Obviously there's some decimal error or something. So then just go back into chat GPT. And then I said, nice. I just tested it out and the number seemed very high. Are you sure you adjusted for the percentage decimals correctly? And it says, you're right, blah, blah, blah. So it just gives you new code. So copy that and then come in here. Just change this, delete this, paste this in. And now we should have correct numbers. Yeah, you see the stock is now 1% above the 20 day, seven day, 7% 7 above the 50 day and 20% below the uh, 200 day. So that's correct. And then for the next thing we want to add, right now I have it, if you go into here, there's nothing. No, so it's just using the default values that I said before, which was uh, 20, 50, and 200. And that might be what, what you want, but someone else might not want that. So what I wanted to do was to just add input values right here. So just went into ChatGPT and said, brilliant, thanks. Can you give me a version where the user can input the three different moving average values themselves? And here you go. So now I copy this code, go back in there. Okay, so now if I go in here and open this, now we can enter these three different inputs. And then what I would imagine I said is, what if the person wants to use an exponential moving average instead of a simple moving average? Because sometimes I like to use both. So go back in here, say, can you give me a version where it's make sure the labels appear in the upper instead of the lower? Yeah, so it gives, it gives the new code when it puts them in the, uh, in the upper value. It just took off that declare lower thing. And uh, next one, I said, great, can you give me a version where the user can choose between SMA and EMA? And make it default to SMA, please. So copy this code. Okay, so now it's on the upper and this looks good. And we go in here and see the inputs. Okay, so we have these three inputs here and we have these down here, you could choose SMA or EMA. And I think that's, we're getting towards the end. But one thing it actually had problems with, right? Here where he says, it says stock is 1.26% and stock is 7.72%. You know, it's just a readability issue. I wanted it to have the symbol. So it would say DG is 1.26 from the 20 day. And this actually gave it some, some trouble. So I had to go through three different iterations with it. But, uh, you know, eventually you got it fixed. And I said, great, can you make it so the user inputs are named MA instead of SMA? Okay, so he changed the, uh, the user inputs so to make it more readable. And copy code. You see right here, it says SMA one length, SMA two length. It's kind of confusing because if the person chooses EMA, then it still says SMA. So I wanted to change that. And right here was uh, one of the uh, the problems. When I asked it to change it from the word stock into the actual symbol, I kept getting this error here. And so I just said, you know, this the word symbol is highlighted in red. And down here, there's an error. Expected double at 33.5. So I copied and pasted that in there. And I just said, the word symbol is highlighted and I get this error message. And it says, you know, it's a string issue or whatever. So I copied this code and I put it in there and I was still getting an error. And it says, I apologize for the confusion. The issue seems to be with the way we're trying to concatenate the symbol, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, it gave me this, this new one down here and the error was still there. And it figured it had to try a different function. So it used this one. And I think this one worked. Okay, so let me check this. Okay, this is correct so far. And now let me see if the word stock is there or symbols there. So now you see DG is 1.26 and if I go to like another symbol, 
go to AMD, you know, it changes it right here. So that was a little trickier than I thought it would have been, but if you just keep going back and just telling it the errors and what's going on, it'll, it'll definitely come up with a fix after a while. It's got to be a little patient sometimes, but it's worth it. It's easier than coding it from scratch. And then what else did I do? Uh, other things I just added were just clearly cosmetic, like adding spaces around certain things. So that's pretty much it. I hope you could see, you know, how powerful this is. You see how easy that was to create, you know, you know, this is a pretty decent uh, thing script right here. You know, I could have just kept improving upon it and like made it longer and longer and done a lot of other crazier things and I might add to it in the future, but this was definitely a good start and, and a pretty helpful script, I think. But in, uh, in my opinion, this is definitely the easiest way to create think scripts for yourself. And I definitely recommend you try it. So I hope this video gave you some cool ideas for scripts you can create in Thinkorswim. The possibilities are pretty endless. And remember, if you want to keep track of all your real strategy trades for free, then make sure to check out my site yieldcollector.com. And I put the think script from this video in the description below if you wanted to use it. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right, talk to you in the next one.